In this video, I'm going to take you on a winter photography adventure in the West Highlands of Scotland. This video was shot across two days on a winter skills and mountain photography trip, co-led with Rich Pine, who is a local winter mountain leader. The trip happened to coincide with the arrival of both storms Dudley and Eunice in the UK, so it was a pretty windy trip, but also one of the most enjoyable I've ever had. On this particular day, we were heading off to Loch Ildemore, a high mountain loch in the Mamores, hoping that we would then be able to continue on up to one of the nearby peaks. The route started pretty steeply, but once we were out of the trees, we had some amazing views of the snow-capped mountains and back to Loch Leven. We were actually starting in the late morning in order to avoid the worst of the forecast summit winds. It's actually no joke being up in the snow in gale force winds for hours on end, so we timed our walk to get to Loch Ildemore by mid-afternoon. After that initial steep ascent, the route does ease off for the next couple of kilometres and as we gradually gained height, we met the snow line at about 450 metres. From there, the scenery became increasingly beautiful and as the wind picked up, it got more and more adventurous too. I struggled to record audio on this walk because of that wind. Uh, it was causing me some real problems. So I'll pick this back up again when we reach the top of the mountain and then I'll talk you through some of my images. So 
that was a pretty astonishing day and one that I think we'll remember for a very long time. I have to say that photographs pale in comparison to experiences like that. But despite the difficult conditions, we all stopped to take photos and I actually shot quite a few images on the fly that will end up in my portfolio. But I thought I'd focus specifically on the scene at the top of the mountain. And one very serious challenge we had was a newly formed cornice between us and the view. And the wind was gusting 40 or 50 miles an hour and stepping onto that cornice would have been a fatal mistake quite literally. So I couldn't stand on the edge and consequently this was the best I could do with the view below us. But I was far more interested in making a photo of the peak you see on the left edge of the frame. I was essentially forced to include the cornice so I looked for the most interesting section of cornice and did my best within the restrictions I had to form a pleasing composition. Then it was just a waiting game because as you can see the light was mostly quite flat and when the wind got up, the spin drift completely hid the view, which was pretty incredible to see, but not so good for taking that photo. But it did clear, and here is the final image, which I'm very pleased with. Uh, it's also an interesting shot technically, since I was shooting handheld, and I also had a depth of field issue because I was shooting at 70 millimeters. And getting the cornice and backdrop sharp either required focus bracketing which is a pain handheld particularly in wind like that uh, or I would have to shoot at a very small aperture and focus a bit past the corners to get both the corners and backdrop within that depth of field which is ultimately what I did so this is shot at ISO 400 to give me a 1 30th of a second shutter speed at f16 and the image and sensor stabilization did a great job here. So the image is wonderfully detailed and a bit of sharpening more or less negates the diffraction effects of shooting at f16. So this is a good example of how I would move away from ISO 100 f11 settings uh, that I usually use uh, when I need to. I thought I'd quickly show you the edit here as well. So this is the original raw file without any changes at all. And you can see that it's a bit lacking in contrast and it's perhaps slightly underexposed, although I have kept the highlights there. So I do tend to do that, uh, just make sure I don't clip anything. Uh, and then I did some basic edits in Lightroom, which you see here. So adding a fair amount of contrast has made quite a big difference. And I needed to make some white balance changes to compensate for that addition of contrast so that the image didn't become too saturated. And then finally, I made some adjustments in Photoshop to further brighten and add more contrast to the image, as well as doing a little bit of local work, just holding back the sky in various places um, and slightly brightening the prominent mountain in the center there because I felt that the contrast between that and the cornice was just a little bit too strong. And uh, it was fairly important, I think, with this image to keep it nice and bright and, and fresh feeling. I didn't want it to look overly dramatic but most of all I love this image because of the interlocking shapes the very cohesive palette of blues and the generally understated feel so I'm really looking forward to printing this one Rich was pretty keen to get off the mountain whilst it was still light and I think we'd had the best of the light anyway and everybody was pretty keen to get back for a pub dinner so we headed down that steep slope first on foot and, uh, and then sliding down and you can see Rich here uh, paddling the last few meters of the slope with his uh, hiking poles. So yeah, it was a really fun way to finish the day. So before I skip ahead to the final day, I thought I'd quickly show you a couple of the other days we had whilst we were out in the Glencoe area. And we did have one that was completely washed out, but the other two were both fantastic in different ways. This was actually our first day on Buccal Etive Beg, and it was just a wild day. But we also had some really fantastic light. The sun came out at just the right moment. Uh, so everybody got some good photos on that day. And then we had another day hiking up into the the Lost Valley on Bidian Nambian. Very heavy snowfall on that day, 
um, but it was uh, it was quite fun to uh, to try and get photos in those conditions. Not entirely successful, but uh, but fun all the same. But our final day was very special indeed, and uh, that's what you're going to see now: the hike up Ben Acrulest. <laughs> Do. Anyone got a 20 stop? Hello everyone from the top of Stob Benacrulas, which is on the way up to the summit of one of Glencoe's most famous mountains, at least for photographers. So we're shooting a pretty iconic view here with Bucolette Moor off to my right. Probably the most photographed peak in Scotland actually. But we've got it in perfect winter conditions. This is our last day of a pretty wild workshop. So we've absolutely earned this amazing sunrise that we're having at the moment. And as you can uh, see I'm sure the light is happening right now so I'm going to take some photos. So this is a bit of a when in Rome image. Many people have photographs of Bucolet of Moor from this viewpoint but it is one of Scotland's most spectacular mountains and obviously here we have perfect snow cover and beautiful lighting too. So whilst it's a simple image and certainly not individual it is one that I like but I did think that by waiting uh, maybe I could improve upon it. So we're fast forwarding a little bit here because obviously the light has changed quite a lot because uh, I have been taking a few photos but um, I think the light is maybe at its very best now for photographing uh, Bucolette of Moor here just because we've got light down in the valley and you can see there is a, a road this is the A82 the main way into to Glencoe that of course I'd like to leave out of the composition so that somewhat limits, limits you um, there's quite a nice wide way of shooting this as a huge panorama because you can see off here down to the right and here are a few of the guys. Um, we're looking down through Glencoe, down towards Glencoe village. But I'm interested in, in just shooting uh, the mountain on its own, doing the classic for once um, because I don't have a really nice uh, image of this mountain in such beautiful conditions. So I'm just using a polarizer. If I just turn that you can see the effect. So that's with it off and that's with it on. So that does really help to bring out the, the depth in the sky there. Um, and I'm also shooting portrait because I just love those crags towering over the river there. So I think rather than shooting landscape, which of course I have also shot uh, something like this, um, I think that the image I'll end up choosing is probably the portrait version. So I prefer this vertical frame to the landscape largely because of that light coming down into the glen there but also I think the portrait format just makes more of a portrait of this rather spectacular mountain and those crags on the left hand side and I thought this would be the end of the shoot so I didn't record any video after this but we did continue our walk and as it turned out the best photo of the day uh, was going to be from the summit. 
I'm on the summit of Benacrulis now, which means you've got no continuity between where I shot sunrise and, and where we are now. But I planned just to hike up here and hike back down, but we've come across this amazing formation of Sestrugi in just the right place to shoot Bukalet of Moor here and Bidian Nambian, which is behind me. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a quick uh, composition lesson. So I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and just show you how I go about my thought process and, and find my frame. So I'm starting at 16 millimeters here, which is pretty wide. And uh, I'm sure many of you like to shoot at those ultra wide focal lengths and maybe get close to your foreground and generate this amazing sense of perspective like this. And that can be quite effective. Um, but one thing that will do is diminish the mountains relative to the foreground. And I really like to work background first um, when I'm photographing mountains. Uh, so by that I mean I want to frame up the mountains how I want them and then change the camera position to manipulate the foreground. So in this case I'm going to zoom in quite a lot actually. So I think this is about 24 millimeters I'm at here and uh, you can see how I've arranged the mountains. Not too much space either side of them but they still feel nicely spread across the top of the frame. That's uh, Bucolet of Moor on the left there and Bidian Nambian on the right. So now we can just move physically around to, to change the foreground. I can obviously go forward and backwards and up and down and this is an approach that every photographer should take when especially when they're learning uh, composition. To a certain extent now I, I know where I want to be fairly quickly because I see everything in this uh, this 3D way so I, I don't need to do as much experimentation as I used to. Um, but as I get lower here I think generally the scene improves uh, but you can see some rocks starting to creep in at the bottom of the frame which I'll have to be aware of and obviously I'm shooting uh, here at 16 by 9 ratio and the final frame will be either 2 by 3 or four by five and I'm thinking about what's going to happen on the right hand side that bottom right hand corner where there isn't the sastrugi these snow formations because I might end up cropping there as well so I might take uh, a shot a little off to the left and one to the right and then of course one a bit wider as well because it is always nice to have that flexibility to crop in in the future and here is that final image which I'm pretty chuffed with to be honest. Um, you can see that I did step slightly off to the left to move that sastrugi towards the right to close down on that area that didn't have the snow formation and what an incredible sculpture that is in the foreground. I haven't often seen snow quite that good. Real treat to find that right on top of the mountain and part of the reason that I that I love this scene is that it is such a different take on what is a very popular peak and that's something that I like to do when I have the opportunity which often uh, doesn't come when you visit these popular spots but uh, here it certainly did and it's nice to have some more interesting clouds drift in whilst we waited there and have that little bit of cloud capping Bucolet of Moor as well so uh, everything came together to to make a photo that I'm, I'm really very pleased with. Um, and if you'd like to come and see these kinds of scenes for yourself, I can't guarantee snow like this every trip, but uh, I will be returning next February to Glencoe with the same winter mountain leader, Rich Pine. So if you'd like to join that trip, please do take a look at my website. Otherwise, if you have enjoyed this video, then please do consider subscribing to my channel.